friends in this session i will speak to you about the prosecutor of the international criminal court his latest move about the gaza war this presentation is something very interesting as it discusses the role of the international criminal court uh, we will see that uh, the international criminal court as you are aware is uh, located at hague in the netherlands and it has a permanent court for the crimes of genocide crimes against humanity war crimes and crime of aggression on which it has jurisdiction this slide shows you the four specific core crimes where the icc has jurisdiction although the aggression uh, the elements of crime are yet to be decided uh, it uh, provides for a court with 18 judges uh including a president there is a prosecutor and a registry these are the three wings of the icc and as of recent there are 124 countries uh, which are the members of icc but it doesn't include the us russia and china mr karim khan is the prosecutor the british national Uh, the statement that he made on 20th may 2024 is relevant for the purpose and this concerned the ongoing gaza conflict and uh, the incidents taking place there with regard to civilians in the course of armed conflict uh, you would recall that uh, 7th of october was the day last year when attack took place saw number of casualties and uh, this was followed by a retaliation by the israeli armed forces and their prime minister netanyahu's statement to vow to keep fighting what have been the impact on civilians in this armed conflict 2.4 million people to say the least they stand stripped of access to clean water medicine and uh, israeli strategy is to carry out targeted raids on terrorist infrastructure uh, which shown which had number of uh, dozens of tunnels through which the palestinians terrorists used to move the action by israeli has uh, led to the plight by the palestinians uh the statement by the icc prosecutor has accused two persons of war crimes that's the prime minister and the defense minister of israel uh, on the other side three hamas leaders ismail hania yaya sinwar and mohammad diab ibrahim al masri you see their images down below on this slide ultimately Uh, at the end of the report the prosecutor has requested the icc judges that they may consider and issue warrant of arrest of these uh, accused persons specifically the charges which have prima facie emerged uh, they fall under crimes against humanity and war crimes you are aware about the total jurisdiction and the offenses which have been particularly singled out pertain to willful killing extermination and or murder there have been people denied of the food starvation and uh, the prosecutor report says that the uh, conflict between israel and palestine is international armed conflict whereas between uh, israel and hamas is non international armed conflict various provisions of the icc statute uh, in so far as section 7 and 8 are concerned have been invoked to indicate the offenses the type of evidence on which the icc prosecutor karim khan's report was based is also shown to you on the slide which is in front of you it is 
to be noted that the prosecutor chose not to include the Israeli military commanders and it concentrated on political leadership. Hamas have been assigned, pinned the criminal responsibility for the actions they committed during the first October 7 attack and uh, it is uh, to be noted that Hamas has been designated a terrorist organization by the United States and the European Union in so far as legitimacy of Hamas is concerned. 20th May, Mr. Karim Khan filed an application uh, for issue of warrant of arrest against uh, these five accused persons whom I spoke about earlier. It would be interesting to see what is the reaction of the two sides, the Israelis and the Hamas leaders. In so far as uh, the Israelis are concerned, uh, we have got in detail and Hamas uh, have, uh, their reaction is that uh, this is surprising that victims have been equated with the perpetrators of serious crimes and this is in line of the uh, terror or the atrocities, the difficulties imposed by the Israeli armed forces on the Hamas. In so far as Israelis are concerned, this is, uh, they have said that it's a reward for the terrorism. Going a little in detail, the view of the Israelis is there. Uh, you may appreciate uh, what is their uh, viewpoint. It is also to be seen that uh, can ICC proceed further? Well, it has no mechanism to enforce its verdict. However, as a result of uh, the indictment, all the members of the ICC, they would be obliged to arrest these five accused persons or any one of or as many of them as they can lay their hands on. It says that uh, a baseline for human conduct has to be respected even during armed conflicts. The notion of complementarity on which ICC's jurisdiction is based uh, a deferral to national authorities is only required uh, when they engage in impartial inquiry. These are two very important questions that emerge at this stage. Some view that ICC has overreached and uh, can the two sides be kept on the same plank. It will be interesting to see uh, what the hardliners in the United States state, how do they view it and uh, what was the Trump campaign for the president's post, uh, it has called for, it has said that US should impose sanctions on the ICC. Presently Joe Biden is in chair and he is not able to decide if he takes a view to deny the prosecutor's request, what would be the implication? Within Israelis, there is an element which says that deliberate use of starvation of civilians as a method of warfare or during the conflict could have been avoided. Now the discussions the world over amongst the experts is what next? There is a possibility ICC judges may not agree and grant the prosecutor's request. And the very important conclusion is that ICC has to be seen to act against war crimes and otherwise the court would be risking and looking increasingly important and irrelevant. Thank you.